Good evening and welcome to the Monday, May 8, 2017 Board of Education meeting. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I just note, by the way, we have two flags, uh, finally. We have a full-size flag over to my left, your right, and uh, but uh, there must be a protocol, uh, and I'm going to suggest you use this flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, <coughs> so I'm going to suggest that we go to item seven, which is our student rep report right now, um, out of deference to at least one of our reps having AP exams tomorrow. So I, we don't want to take the uh, take the um, take the attention a, a, away from that. So why don't you go ahead? All right. So. Um this uh, last month at Melissa Jones, uh, they, they enjoyed an assembly last week on Friday where they had three authors and illustrators of children's books come in. Um, and so they learned how to come up with ideas for new books and uh, how they illustrate characters and create plots. And then kind of a uh, combination of GHS and Melissa Jones, the National Honor Society from GHS, sent a few members uh, over to Melissa Jones to read with the fourth graders. And uh, they discussed um, transitioning into middle school and um, topics such as new friends, individualism, and acceptance of others, which is, I think, really important uh, to pass on the torch from uh, my generation to the next. Um, and then the first graders went on a field trip to Dudley Farm uh, recently, and it was supported by Soul Studies Unit on families long ago and now to see how uh, families back in the days of Dudley Farm, uh, when it was first founded, uh, would act on the farm and then how they would act now with uh, the current owners, which is very interesting. Um, and then at Cox, uh, the first graders recently learned about metamorphosis of frogs, and uh, they're actually going to Bushy Hill uh, soon to go see it uh, in their natural habitat, which I think is very interesting. Um, and the third graders are beginning a megabytes uh, of meaning from maps uh, real estate uh, topic, which is... Uh, basically, they're creating a writing proposal pretending that they're real estate agents uh, trying to make the dream uh, house for their clients and that still fits the zoning and planning laws, which I think is incredibly interesting since I never had that opportunity and don't think I could do that. Um, <laughs> third graders are doing this. Um, and then at Lakes, recently they had the Lions Pride Assembly where fourth grade classes taught their pre-K friends uh, how to count to 20. And they would get uh, in the, they were in the gym and had a big assembly where they would uh, form groups that all added up to 20. So, like, you'd have a group of seven kids and a group of, like, eight kids, all the numbers that uh, went up to 20 um, to teach them how that worked. And then uh, early Guilford Day is coming up, so they had some preparation for that where they had a colonial trunk come and they got to try on some colonial clothes to see how uh, colonial people would dress up. And uh, then they're looking for good campaign just finished up where um, they had the gratitude wall and they put things on the wall with sticky notes of what they're grateful for with their friends and family and life in general, which is uh, very, uh, very good for the community. And the Spanish classes had an open house for the first and second grade uh, parents and students to invite them into the class, uh, show them what kind of Spanish they're learning and what their daily routine is in those classes to try and get uh, interest in that class. Uh, and from Calvin Leet, the fourth graders uh, started to learn about Chinese immigration, uh, and they used historical fiction and primary source texts to cross-examine and look at uh, character development and check for the accuracy of the information. Um, the third graders at Calvin Leet are they're just wrapping up a digital literacy unit in which uh, they became real estate agents. <laughs> And they used uh, online resources and uh, mapping skills to try and find the perfect property for their clients. Uh, and the uh, kindergarten first and second graders uh, enjoyed a visit from Eric Litwin, uh, who is a, uh, a storyteller and an author who uh, wrote the Pete and the Cat books. Uh, and he was very humorous and presented uh, an entertaining, entertaining presentation about... Um, Literacy, literacy skills. Uh, and from Baldwin Middle School, uh, the SBAC testing, which is the Smarter Balanced, Balanced Assessment Testing, uh, has been uh, implemented this year and will be administered to all students in grades 5 and 6, la or were, was administered to all students in grades 5 and 6 last week. Uh, and Transitions, uh, they are taking the uh, fourth grade students uh, at all the different uh, elementary schools and 
having them come to Baldwin Middle School to try and help their transition from elementary school to middle school uh, a lot more smoothly, or work out more smoothly. Uh, and some of the end of the year activities, the uh, band, chorus, and orchestra will be holding concerts all in early June. Uh, the grade six students will be taking a trip to Lake Compounds on June 2nd, which is always fun. And uh, the PTO is sponsoring their third annu annual end-of-year carnival on June 9th. Uh, and from Adams Middle School, uh, since January, the students have been working on the Iron Giraffe Challenge uh, for water for South Sudan. Uh, and their goal was to reach $1,000. And with all the support from uh, students and parents, and people from the community, they were able to raise uh, $2,600, mm -hmm. uh, which is very impressive. Uh, and all the students at Adams as well have been taking the uh, SBAC, the Smart Balance Assessment mm -hmm. Tests. Uh, and recently, there was a 7th and 8th grade uh, jazz band band concert uh, on May 4th. And this coming uh, Wednesday, May, or next Wednesday, May 17th, there will be an orchestra concert. And then at the high school, uh, spring sports are well underway, uh, starting to wrap up soon with the school year wrapping up. Um, our baseball team actually, I believe, scored something about 60 runs in their past three games, which is uh, insane. Wow. Um, and then in other great sporting news, we had uh, our track 4x100 relay team break a 40-year-old school record uh, where Sam Sessions, Corey Sondak, Jordan Limbo Fry, and uh, Tommy Larkin wells uh, beat the record by 0.5 seconds, which is really impressive. Um, and also in uh, other sporting news, we had one of our students, Lizzie Reynolds, win uh, the Spirit of Life Award from Special Olympics Connecticut um, due to her um, kind of growth and just like the way she's given back to our community and how she's interacted with our community and are both on and off the sporting field for Special Olympics. Um, and being with her these past few years for Unified and Special Olympics, uh, I was actually just out of practice. Um, it's just been, uh, really fun to see how she's progressed. Um, from someone who's kind of shy and uh, didn't really like running or working out to someone who really enjoys Unified and Special Olympics and is uh, one of the most vocal people uh, out cool. there now. Um, and then also we had our teacher appreciation uh, week just this past week, and we had a um, big breakfast for them where parents and uh, some students would bring in, or brought in food, and I believe they had a, uh, some catering also. I kept seeing bacon flowing around, and I was getting very jealous. <laughs> um, and also, we have an IB dinner soon for uh, parents. I believe all of you are invited as well, um, who are getting excited about the new IB program to learn more and uh, start connecting with it. Uh, and other news from Guilford High School, uh, AP testing is going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and the sad week, uh, the week right before junior prom, uh, we... There, the uh, SAD program put together uh, the mock car crash on the Friday, which uh, basically was before prom and uh, informed students about the dangers of drinking and driving. Uh, and for me, it was very influential. Uh, we had a lot of the police force, a lot of the firefighters come in and basically explain what happens if uh, a situation with a drunk, dri a drunk teen driver ever occurs. Um, and... The day or that Friday, junior prom, uh, which I went to, which was a lot of fun, and I think most of the students had a really good time. Uh, and recently, we've had, or this week is Purple Week, where um, all a lot of uh, community uh, sponsors have been putting up purple flags around the town uh, to raise awareness uh, about drug prevention. Great. Any questions, comments, thoughts? Okay. So good, good luck. luck. Good luck on the. Thank you. Uh, good luck, right? Thank you. Um, and I know I know there are a couple of other people here to present uh, agenda items that may not be very long. Uh, Dr. Freeman, you're eight point one. I know there's a, a couple yes. of representatives. Maybe we can do that right now. That would be great. Um, so in your packet, you have my approval for a field trip that will be taking uh, members of the wind ensemble and the symphony orchestra to Spain over April vacation next month. I know that Mr. Boats and Mr. Gom and Mr. Macenti are here in the audience tonight and would be happy to answer any questions that you may have about that proposed trip. Is there anything you want to say about the trip or want to tell us a little bit about what it is? Please, yeah. <clears throat> um, good evening. Thanks for, thank you for listening uh, to us tonight. Um, 
I'm not sure whether uh, you folks have the itinerary or any of that kind of information in your packet, um, but it's uh, the trip, the proposed trip is essentially uh, eight days uh, in Spain with uh, focusing on Barcelona and Girona. Um, so two, two main cities, performances, three to four performances in, the, in those two areas. Um, all of the historic and cultural spots as well, um, getting a sense for the musical um, uh, landscape uh, and, and, and attending some performances as well. Um, and uh, we've, we've uh, put it, it's a great itinerary. We put it together with um, the same um, company that just did the trip to Ireland that Kevin uh, Buno uh, ran. And yeah, we'd be happy to answer any questions. These are tremendous opportunities for our students. They are self-funded. Uh, we do have opportunities, however, uh, with the approval this early for fundraising that would both offset the cost for individual families and help us with our opportunity to tuitions, uh, to, to have um, tuition for students who couldn't afford to travel on the trip otherwise. And it has become a bit of a tradition. Mm -hmm. well, I, I mean, I, I think probably we heard a lot of uh, reports from the Ireland trip that uh, there, there were how many Children were on the Ireland trip. Like uh, there were, um, there were a hundred, I think, a hundred and five or something like that. Yeah, it, the traveling party was a hundred and twenty something with adults and so on and so forth. But I believe the students. Were and at least from the reports I heard, seamless, just very exciting. Yeah, it was. Um, it was. I, I was there. It was terrific. It was a really, really. It was a great experience, which is what made us so excited to use these people again for another thing. It was one of the most organized tour companies I've ever been a part of. Just spectacular work. Terrific. Well, Great. does anybody else have any questions or comments or concerns or thoughts? Barcelona is one of my favorite cities, and I hope the kids and the adults get a chance to see some of the incredible architecture. That's, that's what I'm yeah, looking forward to. Yeah. City. They may need chaperones. Right, no, that was my question. <laughs> 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 board representation. Yeah, exactly. yeah. The board needs to check this out first. Yeah. <laughs> Well, terrific. And we don't have to approve this. You, you've approved it, but I, think I have approved it. I'm required to bring it to your attention, and we like to give you the opportunity to ask questions and, and understand what we're offering. So, is it fair to say that you go with our full support and our, our congratulations and a tremendous opportunity to all of the students and to and to the staff and chaperones? Right. Absolutely. Thank you for organizing it again. Thank, Thank you very much. much. We appreciate your support. Yep. Thank you. And is, is there anybody else, Dr. Freeman? Is, I know we've got a textbook item here. Is there somebody to present on that, or is that just... Well, one, can we do that now? Yep. That's 9.2. Mm -hmm. That's a receive item only. Come on up, please. Okay. So this is Barbara Tokarska. She is the chairperson of the math department at Guilford High School. And, and if you recall it, uh, a previous CIA meeting, we talked about a new statistics course. Mm -hmm. And this is the... Um, textbook request mm -hmm. for that course and so Barbara if you'd like to just summarize a little bit about the book and I'll be glad to pass it around sure good evening the um, the new course that we have proposed for this year that will be implemented next year is statistics level one slash level two so it's going to be offered at both levels so we were really looking at a resource that would offer a differentiated approach um, and resources for both the students and the teachers um, to really do what the book is titled, Explore Stats in Your World. So it really engages students in working with real life data. Um, it gives connections to, um, to technology that we currently use at the high school, but also technology that goes beyond the scope of what we currently have. So, for example, Stats Crunch is one of the um, technology packages that gives students um, access to abundant data to, to explore in meaningful ways rather than just um, looking at uh, examples that um, might not be um, today real data. Um, it's you know, Beyonce is in there, um, Madonna. <laughs> uh, so, you know, really interesting, engaging, and meaningful. Um, and in terms of college and career readiness, I would say uh, that the authors of the book do a really good job of, um, they believe that it's, 
it, it's really a civic duty to understand statistics. Um, and so they present it in that way, very user-friendly um, and practical. So it, it is a mathematics course, but it's approached in a way that you could consider it a life course. Tonight is a receive-only item. Um, the book will be at central office for the next month. Uh, so anyone in the public um, or you know anyone else who would like to come and review it, it will be available. Now, how many uh, students do you anticipate would take this class? Um, currently, we are planning to run one section, and so our request um, for the textbook would be for one section okay. of students. Mm -hmm. Thirty. Is this textbook or as a class, are you using any software support? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, are you going to teach them how to use any particular program? Yeah, there are several different um, programs that are associated with the book that the book supports. One is um, called My Math Lab. Um, one is Stats Crunch. Um, and uh, let me just make sure I'm – and there's a few. I don't want to mess up the names of them. Um, okay. So we have Math Excel. My Math Lab for school and Stat Crunch, um, and so all of them are available in conjunction with the textbook. Do, did any of the textbooks that you reviewed um, use any of the you know the big commercially available mm -hmm. stats programs like SPSS, SAS, Stat, uh, Stata, um, R, any of those? Or? Stat Crunch would be similar to SPSS. Um, okay. SPSS, um, I used SPSS in in grad school and also in my work as a researcher, so I. I no, it's very valuable, but um, SPSS per se is not being used with the textbook. But StatCrunch would be similar. Similar. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I guess if anybody has questions, they can email uh, Dr. Keene and she can pass them along. Um, and then okay. we will uh, – and you've got enough time if we act on this at our mm -hmm. June meeting. Does that give you enough time? Mm -hmm. Okay. You should. That should be sufficient. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Great. Thank, thank you very much. Thank Good you. evening. Thank you. Is there any? Are there any other? <clears throat> so, if you wanted to move to item nine point one, you have a personnel item, and I know that we have some guests in the oh, audience yes. who are anxious mm -hmm. to see the personnel oh, item. All right. Why don't we go to mm -hmm. nine point one? All right. Um, so we <laughs> we'll do it in the order of the exhibit, <laughs> uh, for better or for worse. Uh, there are five uh, proposed retirements that uh, we would uh, ratify. One is. Margaret Hill, Baldwin, 30 years of service. Shirley Urban, 30 years of service, high school science teacher. Patricia Mitchell, uh, Spanish uh, at Baldwin Middle School, 28 years. Uh, Jim Powers, 38 years, social studies at the high school. And Maureen Williams, uh, Lakes, grade one, 39 years. About 160 years of combined <laughs> service represented here. Well, that's terrific. Uh, so th is there a motion that we ratify those five resignations for the purpose of retirement? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. And so I, with our with your congratulations, very warm thanks. wishes yes. and congratulations and thanks, and yes. Thanks. yes. Um, there are two other resignations, Sarah Alberti, speech-language pathologist at Baldwin Middle School, and Kelly Jensen, uh, mathematics teacher at the high school. Is there a motion that we ratify those two resignations? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Now, we get to the other agenda item. Uh, do you want to introduce this? Yeah. Uh, I am excited to um, bring to your uh, attention and for your approval, we have an assistant principal position that we bring forward tonight. Uh, Mr. Mike Regan uh, was a longtime social worker here at Guilford High School. Uh, he left Guilford Schools to pursue administrative um, opportunities. Uh, with this opportunity at Adams, um, uh, Mrs. Walker and I conducted a search. We had 161 applications for this opening uh, that we had at Adams Middle School. Uh, we began winnowing that field, starting with a reduced number of about 40 um, <coughs> applicants. Uh, we seated a, a committee that included um, teachers and parents and students from Adams, as well as Mr. Bloss and Mrs. Walker and myself. And ultimately, uh, we have selected uh, Mike Regan, and we have invited him to return to Guilford and take the position uh, of assistant principal at Adams Middle School. Uh, I know that I couldn't be more happy, and I think I speak for Mrs. Walker as well, and we're here asking for your approval for that appointment tonight. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> Second. 
Well, I, any, anybody who uh, was in, active and involved when uh, when uh, Mr. Regan was a social worker here is, has the enthusiasm that Dr. Balistrasi mm -hmm. just uh, demonstrated. He, he is one of the great educators, one of the great people, frankly, that I've run into in this in this work. And so, uh, I, I, I we had some outstanding candidates. I'll be honest. I mean, there there were some really good candidates, and I think there were some several candidates that I think any of us on the committee would have said, you know, these are terrific alternatives. But you know, uh, Mr. Regan um, has a track record of, of of success here, and and compassion, and empathy, and and hard work, and as it's just a true educational leader. So I think the committee was was uh, was very happy and very pleased to um, bring him forward to Dr. Freeman. And and um, so I, it's a great hire. It's just simply a great hire. And we're very happy that uh, Mr. Regan has chosen to return to Guilford. You know, uh, shouldn't have left in the first place, but no, that's it. <laughs> although we, you know, although I, to be fair, I think we understand it was actually uh, professionally it was a really good thing to do. And so, um, very very happy that he has uh, returned. So, motion has been made and seconded. Just one comment. Uh, I knew Mr. Regan in my former life as a pediatrician. And he and I shared some of my patients. And from the point of view of students and kids, I don't know any social worker other than my son who is more <laughs> respected and more uh, inspired by the work that Mike has done uh, as a social worker at the high school. And I'm sure that will continue as an assistant principal at Adams. All right, motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, Mr. Regan, do you want to say anything? You, uh, you, have, uh, you are back there somewhere, right? Yes. <laughs> it's a little tough to top. Uh, I really want to thank you. I'm, I'm incredibly humbled by your comments. I greatly appreciate that. Um, and I was sitting here behind these young men thinking, you too could be a school administrator someday. Because <laughs> I, I grew up in Guilford and came through the Guilford schools, and uh, I'm honored to be back. I honestly never thought I would, you know, uh, it was very hard to think that it was a possibility. And uh, I'm really grateful for the opportunity. Catherine walked me around the uh, illustrious, beautiful facility that looks a lot like this at Adams. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I was just growing with excitement uh, the more that we talked. So I can't wait to get started. Um, she may be concerned about how much I'm going to harass her over the next couple of months. But um, I've had a great opportunity to learn a ton in my time away from Guilford, and I can't wait to get started. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We, don't, we don't hire administrators every meeting, you know. We, we can do that, right? That's terrific. Okay, so... We did vote, didn't we? I thought yes. we did. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. But thank you for thank you for <laughs> making sure. Yes. Um, okay. Great. Well, let's. Uh, is there anything else now? I guess not. Uh, in terms of off off agenda items or disordered agenda items. All right. So let's go back to the uh, agenda. If we wanted to do the. Um, the physics field trip to Orlando oh, this sure, June sure. as well, then, then Mr. Macenti would only be welcome to stay as long as he wanted to. He wouldn't be Oh, let's do that then. That's fine. So how could we possibly have, <laughs> be, have any concerns about that? Uh, <laughs> our physics team has placed in the national. I do want to point out that a number of students uh, who will be attending this trip will be traveling after their graduation in June. We have checked with our insurance providers. Um, it is... Uh, completely falls under all of our, our umbrella policies. We are excited to offer this opportunity. As we have with other trips, um, the cost will be falling to the families. Uh, we have less time, but if you approve tonight, we will have some time to do possibly some limited fundraising. And we are looking to the <coughs> student activity account. There is some unspent dollars in the physics line. We will use that to offset the expense of this trip as well. We're very excited to ask for your approval to allow our students to compete. And I think just for the purposes of the uh, uh, t uh, television, uh, this is uh, the, the physics teacher, the AP physics teacher, Risa Rajinsky, is taking seven students to compete in uh, a competition in Orlando hosted by the Technology Student Association, uh, June 21 to 24. So this is obviously a huge honor, um, very exciting. Um, 
the students have qualified for involvement through previous right, previous competitions, and Mr. Macenti is here if there are any questions. And this is a national competition. This is a national competition. I mean, this is, this is really <coughs> impressive stuff. We're very proud of the students yeah. and very excited for this opportunity. Is there any, Mr. Macenti, you want to add anything? You want to say anything? No? Hey, Mr. Macenti, please. <laughs> <laughs> Come on up and tell us what you, what you know about it. <laughs> See, you know, I don't usually have to coax him into saying something positive about Guilford High School. This might be the first time, but this is terrific. It, it's 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 quite an honor, that's for sure. It really is. And, uh, you know, the seven, the seven students that are going, uh, five of them have grad will, will have graduated, and they still want to go. They still want to represent their high school and perform at a national event. So I think it's wonderful. It is a first-time event for us, so we are um, figuring out the logistics as we go through. But as I said, we know that insurance will cover it. At this point, we are expecting families to cover the cost, but we will work to help them offset that cost with some opportunities to raise funds. Okay. Any questions? Any other comments? Mm -hmm. Well, so I think as with the last uh, field trip, you uh, go with our blessing and our support mm -hmm. and very proud of uh, what the accomplishments of the physics That's very exciting. Um, while I'm here, I, I don't know if there's any questions about the swimming. Um, so, update. Uh, I might as well. well might as well. Uh, we are at the, the agenda <laughs> order is <laughs> <laughs> The recording secretary is looking out of the corner of her eye at us. So, <laughs> item 8.4, um, with the passage of our, buzz, uh, of our budget, uh, Mr. Jarvis immediately um, uh, advertised and held a meeting for any students um, who are interested either at, uh, in the eighth grade at Adams or here at the high school currently in the inaugural season of a girls swim team which would launch this coming fall. Um, we posted it as a mandatory meeting for the students. Uh, we wanted to ensure that we had uh, enough interest and we had 20 students who came out and expressed um, a, a commitment to perform, uh, to compete wow. with that team next year. Mr. Jarvis is following up, making sure that we can confirm with each parent that those students are interested, and he is beginning to schedule, uh, he's beginning to build the schedule for our girls' team. We will be posting for the coaching position for our girls' team, and I have had some conversation with interested family members who have also been in touch with uh, Mrs. Trudeau, who are going to begin some fundraising to also offset the cost that will be shifted to the parents of swimmers. We will repeat that process in early September for the boys team, which is a winter sport. Uh, but we're excited with the numbers that we have. We're beginning to move forward with the girls' swim team, um, and we're, we're moving forward. I don't know if there's anything you want to add, Mr. Masenti. Did I get everything? <laughs> yes. If you're, um, if you're available on Saturday, we are hosting the CIAC uh, State Robotics Tournament here. So there's going to be about 25 teams around the state. And uh, if you have a chance to stop by from 9 to 5 on Saturday, it'll take place in both our gymnasiums and our commons area. It is spectacular when you see what these kids have done uh, with these robots. Uh, so if you have an opportunity Saturday to stop by, please do so. You've seen Apple Pie Robotics bring their robots to do demonstrations for you here, but we've never before hosted a competition. We're very excited to be hosting. Terrific. away from the podium. Yeah, that's <laughs> We know you're not sure. Is he okay? <laughs> uh, that's great. Okay, so I should just explain. I know there's some guests here in the, in the audience, uh, scouts. Uh, uh, we, we have an agenda that lays everything out in order that we're supposed to do. And, um, so far, we haven't done a very good job in following the agenda. However, there's a reason for that, and that is that there are some people that maybe don't want to sit here for two hours while we're talking about paying bills and how much is our electricity going for and, and what should we do about uh, this little detail. And so we try to get people out and, and take agenda items uh, earlier when there's actually somebody here uh, Who's not on the board? Who's in, who's interested in presenting? So, if you're if you're uh, worried that we really don't follow the rules, but it's okay. We 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 can kind of uh, tinker with the agenda as as uh, to make it more convenient for people. Um, so, so let's go back to the agenda, shall we? Go to, uh, item three on the agenda is action on minutes. Uh, the three point one is March twenty fifth. That was an executive session. I think that was an expulsion hearing. If, if I'm right. So somebody Correct. who was at that should move. So moved. Second. 
any... Was the retreat. No, sorry, this is the retreat. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that right? Okay, the, the 29th is the yeah. expulsion? Yes. yes. Okay. Still so moved. <laughs> okay, Mr. Kazin moved. And Second. Dr. Myers seconded. Any additions or corrections? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. 3.2 <coughs> is the expulsion hearing, uh, March 29th. So moved. moved. Second. Okay, Mr. Sands moved and Mr. Kazin seconded. The four people that were at that should um, vote on it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, April 3rd, 3.3 is April 3rd regular meeting. Uh, motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Second. Any changes, corrections, additions? I, I do actually, um, if I may, sure. um, on page 4, um, number 10, under 10.4.3, uh, revisions to policy 6330. Um, one, two, three lines down. Uh, it reads, Dr. Balistracy read a letter submitted by Dr. Moore recommending additional wording on the, <coughs> and I would like the, um, I suggest that the rest get crossed out and instead um, have appropriate quantity of homework to be added to the opening or second paragraph of the proposed policy. Um, and I have, I have written these down for Terry, and Terry and I have discussed this. Um, because that is, in fact, what, what Dr. Moore's you. letter was right. saying. Mm -hmm. right. um, and then, I'm sorry, then four, five, six, seven. Um, upon a motion made by Dr. Balistracy and seconded by Mr. Sands, the board voted unanimously to accept the recommendation of the policy committee and approve revisions to policy 6330 homework. Um, I would like um, to remove with the following mm -hmm. change and simply write as submitted by the homework mm -hmm. committee and also take out second bullet should read because it, it's a little confusing mm -hmm. about what was proposed. Okay. I think I'm having trouble following exactly where you are, but is it possible to actually include the letter in the minutes or? I mean, we can do anything we want. We don't typically do that, but, you know, include communications. But um, I, it doesn't matter. It's fine. And I think Mr. Kazin wrote a letter too, though, and then probably should be included as well. I, I, I don't feel strongly about it one way or the other. Uh, Likewise. All right. That's if you just can attach it to the minutes, that's fine. But uh, b both, if we can get them, I assume we have them somewhere. Okay. Hopefully, I have a spell checker turned on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, okay. So, any other corrections on those minutes? All right. Uh, have, did somebody move to no. approve? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. All in favor of the, to approve those minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 3.4 is April Abstain. 20. Dr. Moore abstains, right. April 24, 2000. <laughs> so do I. Who? Both of them. Oh, oh, Mr. Kazen and Dr. Moore abstain. Okay. Uh, April 24, 2017 workshop minutes. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Any corrections, changes on those? All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Okay. Um, anybody else abstain? Okay. Uh, good. Item four on the agenda, public forum for topics on the board agenda. Anybody wish to address the board? No? Okay. Uh, Dr. Balistracy was the reviewer for the expenditures for the month of April. Yes. So expenditures for the month of April were $4,593,911.71. Expenditures and encumbrances through the end of April were 76.05% of the budget as compared to 76.10% in the prior year. Um, we discussed um, the warrants in the operations committee meeting that happened just prior to this. Um, uh, so I'm not sure that um, there are any um, additional questions about that. Um, I will mention that um, Ms. Trudeau did mention to us that um, we are expecting um, that the special ed excess cost grant um, will be, um, we will be a receipt of 75.43%. Uh, by the end of the year of um, kind of the expenses um, that the state um, provides through that excess cost grant, which is a little bit uh, higher proportionally than we were originally expecting. So that's very good news. But still not 100 Still, yeah. absolutely. It is, an, it, is, it is only a partially, it is a partially funded mandate, which is a continually frustrating thing for us. Uh, but it's nice that it came in slightly higher per, proportionally than we had expected. And it's not quite as badly fun, underfunded as, as it could have been. No, that's right. That's right. Okay. But it's estimated. 
Correct. That's right. We have not received correct. the phone at this time. Correct. Okay. So that is a motion to approve the um, expenditures for April. Second. Any other discussion? Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Refuse. Okay. Uh, item six on the agenda, communications. I know you had one. Yes, I had one. Um, I had um, a letter written to me and was asked to read the same because um, this person um, coaches um, T-ball and was tied up tonight. So I received a letter from Kimberly Vigliotti, who is a Guilford resident, <coughs> and she wrote, I'm very excited to share that this summer Camp Invention will be offered in the town of Guilford. Camp Invention is affiliated with the National Inventors Hall of Fame and is a nonprofit 501c3 organization. The camp requires a minimum of 35 children to run, and we will be enrolling soon. The requirement for 35 students in terms of building use is four to five classroom spaces and a common area. Cafeteria is usually preferred. The reason I'm writing is because in order to utilize the school building, it will cost $100 per classroom plus $100 for the cafeteria each day. Because of these extremely high building use fees, the total cost to run the program will be upwards of $290 per student to enroll, as opposed to the base cost of $250 per student to attend. We hope to run this program next year as well, and I intend to do some fundraising over the course of next year in order to bring the cost down to make this program affordable to more, and possibly even free to some who may require a scholarship to attend next year. Camp Invention is a STEM program offered to students in grades one through six and is closely aligned with the new science standards as well as Common Core. We originally intended to market this camp to only Guilford students, however, since we need to guarantee a minimum enrollment in order to afford the room fees, we are unable to keep this offering strictly to students in our community <coughs> this year and therefore will be extending enrollment to any surrounding towns as well. It was suggested by school building administrators that we use Guilford Park and Rec Department to run this program in order to avoid building use fee. However, doing so would require a different type of model, which is less preferable. I'm writing to ask the board to consider an exception to nonprofit organizations that are offering programs that support academic initiatives of our school system and promote inquiry-based learning for students. I strongly believe this program should be accessible to all students in our community who are interested in science, math, and problem solving. And keeping a program like this affordable can be achieved by reducing the cost or making available free classroom spaces available within our community. Thank you for your consideration. We have already begun the enrollment for this year and the price has been posted, but I do look forward to hearing if this is something that can be re-examined for next year as I hope to run this program in Guilford. Sincerely, Kimberly Vigliotti. Okay, so I think we, we talked, about this, uh, talked about this a little bit in the operations committee meeting and the suggestion would be that the policy committee look at this and now we've had a little bit of history <coughs> with the, you worked hard on this, I know, the whole fee issue. Um, and, and the policy yeah. committee as a whole did. And if there are things that we should take a look at, take a look at them, right? If not, then. Right. So the fee schedule, right, so the fee scheduled is not actually part, um, uh, just to clarify, part of our Board of Ed policy, um, but we do have a policy that helps kind of guide that. Um, so um, certainly, as we discussed in operations, it makes sense for the administration and the policy committee members to talk about kind of the theories conceptually and the approaches um, that we may want to revisit. Right. Right. This board established sort of a, a concept moving forward. Our policy for fees has tiered fees for um, local nonprofit groups. So nonprofit groups who are located in Guilford essentially get spaces at no cost for nonprofit groups regardless of their, um, of their location and then for for-profit groups. And so Camp Invention uh, is receiving um, the rooms at that middle point, at the nonprofit point. Uh, Mrs. Vigliotti has spoken with us in the administration. She has requested an exception to the fee schedule. Uh, we did not grant an exception, although we did quite a bit of work with Project Invention, and we are excited to offer it. I agree that we should um, take the time. The fee schedule has been in place for about a year now, that we should revisit that fee schedule. Um, but I do not believe that we should make exceptions for individual nonprofit groups. We've had other groups that have requested an exception, um, and some of those have been local groups, and at this point we have not made exceptions. We've 
we've um, stuck to that fee schedule. So I think that uh, we should run camp invention this summer as agreed, and I'd be happy to revisit the fee schedule with members of the policy committee. And, and in fact, we talked about Doing wanting anyway. right, exactly. um, um, wanting to go through a year plus to see how this rolled out, to see who used our facilities, mm -hmm. um, how, how all those things worked, um, and that yep. we would be revisiting anyway. So, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I got an email from Keith Bishop, uh, the uh, our former colleague here, and then the Mr. Massani mentioned it, but I just want to set this up. But two weeks ago, I'm in St. Louis for the first time in my life, right? I'm seeing an expert witness. Never been to St. Louis before. I got, have a couple of hours to kill before the guy's available. I decide, what, what do you do in St. Louis, right? Go in the arch. Go to the arch, <laughs> right? Go to the arch. All right. So I, go, I, I take the light rail, go down to the arch. I'm walking around. It's almost sunset. It's, you know, here we are, St. Louis. There's nobody on the street. Three people come down. One of them is wearing an Apple Pie Robotics T-shirt. <laughs> it turns out that the Guilford team was in St. Louis at a competition oh, the same time I was there. And, and so I guess they did pretty well. But uh, in any event, yeah, it's crazy, right? What are they, right? I'm there for 10 minutes. <laughs> and, and I went into three people from Guilford, you know, <laughs> whatever, in any event. So Keith uh, sent us an email um, reminding everybody about the, uh, the uh, Connecticut CIAC Robotics Championship, Guilford High School, 9 to 4. Over 30 teams will be, and that will be this Saturday. Um, uh, over 30 teams will be competing. Each team has built one robot, and the robots are going to compete three on three to outscore their opposing alliance, which is interesting. I don't know quite how you get robots to cooperate with each other, but maybe maybe they can do it. So that sounds like that's great, and that's a really fabulous team. You talk about STEM, uh, a STEM extracurricular. That is a, a fabulous uh, program. It's a great program. It's, it's a great program broadly. Apple Pie happens to be a really um, well-run and organized team. And, and again, as I said, we're really excited to be hosting a competition <coughs> in our new facility. We're not going to have flying things around the uh, building. No, the we? robots yeah. are very controlled and well. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, was no accidents, please. Um, <laughs> did, uh, any other communications? Uh, not really communication. Uh, it, um, uh, but well, it came up in in uh, conversation on social media. I guess there was a um, a little hiccup statewide with the SAT results. So our our juniors now for their state assessment take SATs, um, and they took them at the beginning of April. Um, and I guess there was a little hiccup in early, early releases, well, early releases of scores, some of which turned out to be perhaps maybe actual scores, some of which gave students their old PSAT scores, some of which gave oh, students sure. their, anyway, there was a little hullabaloo, at least on, on social media, as various um, kids and parents looked things up and got very confused and a little rattled. The window was opened for a very short period of time, and people who found out that the window was open when began looking, and right, some of the scores were accurate, some of them were not. It's they not had clear, not been confirmed. It's not clear whose were and whose Correct. were not, and, um, and I understand now the official window will be open. I believe today. On, okay. Yeah. So. But anyway, if anyone hears okay. about that, that's for what it's about. And, and students, right, for students uh, who we took won't, it. The, um, the school will not have the results until mid-June. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be the official release as far as, you know, aggregate scores. And so it will be uh, about mid-June when we get everything. But the individual scores right. for uh, the student will be um, available this week for parents and students to see. But it, that was a college <coughs> board issue. It had oh, it, it, happened, to do. it happened at schools across the yes, state. It, was. um, it, it was, wasn't. Right. Uh, Connecticut, um, you know, State Department of Education issue. It was really uh, something that happened through College Board, and it was just a little bit premature before everything had been confirmed and everything had been checked uh, appropriately. So the original date, which uh, is this week, that was what was originally said when it would be released, and so that little hiccup that happened a week early uh, was inadvertent and was certainly a little confusing for some people. All students and parents should check their scores now that the window is officially open and make sure that you have the official scores. Okay. Any other communications? Anything else? Okay. 
Um, I think we're up, if, if, I'm, if my notes are right, we're up to 8.3, which mm -hmm. is budget update. Yes. In very short and very simple, most of my, my report is complete at this time, but I did just want to note again at a public meeting uh, that our budget passed uh, and the town's budget passed as well and the bond measures passed as well on April 18th. And I just want to extend my thanks to all the community members who voted, community members who encouraged um, uh, friends and neighbors to vote, and to all of the board members. I know that you worked very hard on moving this budget forward this year. I'm very proud of the budget, and I'm particularly proud of the, the way that the community recognized those efforts and supported the budget this year. I just wanted to thank all of you publicly and thank all of the voters publicly for passing our school budget. Amen. Yes. <laughs> well, and, and I mean, we, we talked a little bit about this in the Operations Committee, that the the state situation is still quite unsettled, uh, although the Appropriations Committee chairs put out a, dra a proposed budget that actually our, our, our aid would have gone up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I, go figure. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and and I, I, th I, I still am not hearing much interest in the teacher pension. The town's taken over the teacher pension issue. Uh, now there was a big revenue, but from the time the Appropriations Committee chairs announced their proposed budget until today. There's been a decline in, in projected revenue uh, on behalf on the part of the state. So that's going to uh, that's a subject of negotiation right now. So we're 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 you know I still think we're we're within what we anticipated uh, when we put together our budget and when the town put together its budget. But it, there's there is still some uncertainty. But there is no um, there is no possibility of. Uh, Supplemental tax bills that uh, has been made very clear by Mr. Mazza and by the Board of Finance and by us as well. So it'll work out, uh, depending, uh, regardless of what the state does. Then, if the state makes major changes, we'll deal with that in the 2018 uh, 19 budget year, and as well as some in this year. So it's the best we can do. Um, all right, so we're up to item 9.2. Two, I think, right? Or three, three I'm sorry. Three, 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 which is the custodial contract. Is, would you like to talk about that? Certainly. Uh, so we have a, an agreement that's subject to our, our approval. We have it on the agenda as a receive item for, for tonight for possible action. And I'll go through some of the basic terms. Most of the changes, oh, this is a three-year contract, and we're coming up to the end of the first year, actually. So it's three years ending June 30, 2019. And most of the changes were financial salary and benefits. So I'll summarize those. The salary increase is 2.25% for each of the three years. In terms of medical benefits, um, the people joining, new employees are all going into the high deductible plan. Former employees can stay on the old PPO plan if they pay up the difference on the premium. So for the high deductible plan, the board is going to fund 50% of the deductible with a contribution to a health savings account. Um, and the employees will have a 1% increase each year in their copay toward the, pre the monthly premium. So they'll be going, it'll be 14.5% in year one, then 15.5%, and then 16.5%. That's, that's it. That's basically, basically it. Okay. It. All right. Well, I mean, is there any reason why we can't approve this contract if it's been negotiated? Just somebody has to make a motion and I'll, second. I'll, I'll <laughs> move that we approve the contract as Okay. As uh, Mrs. Renner has uh, outlined it. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Ms. Renner seconds. Questions? Comments? That's a, I think everybody agrees this is a reasonable uh, mm -hmm. proposal and it was the result of hard work both by the administration and the Board of Education representatives. Has this been approved by the union? It has been ratified by the union. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Good. Questions? Comments? All right. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Terrific. That's great. Um, 9.4 then is the receive for possible action the food service contract with uh, Unite Here Local 217. And Ms. Cohen was on the committee. And can you talk about sure. that? Sure. Um, so we entered into a four year contract, um, also coming up on the end of year one. So the um, contract period would be ending June 30th, 2020. Um, I, like the custodial contract, the substantive changes have to do with um, general wage increase and um, health plan changes. So 
um, I'll review those as well. But we agreed to a 2% um, general wage increase for each of the four years. Um, we realized some savings in terms of um, health plans. Um, the union will be going with a Unite Here, a union-run health plan. Um, and in terms of copay or premium cost share, um, they will be paying 15% per year, uh, years one through three, and then a, a slight increase to 16% in year four. Okay. Um, is that a motion to approve? The, yes. Yes, and there's a second. Second. All right. Questions, comments? So there, the uh, health plan is changing. It's, it's going from one union plan to a, to a different so one? Correct. So they're currently on a Unite Here health plan um, through the union, and they um, there's a cost savings to go with a different plan within the, you know, the big umbrella, the big plan. Okay. And so that's going to offset some. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were quite re they, they were, they, yeah. I think both the custodians and the um, food service workers were reasonable and and we were able to very much come to agreements. So, yeah. Yep. Right. Well, I'll ask the same question. Is there a reason why we can't approve no. this? No, in fact, we've already why made the motion in second, as I recall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, Good. Uh, so uh, any other questions, comments? Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. That's that. Um, I'd just like to thank Mr. Bowden and all the board members who worked on the negotiations teams. This takes a lot of time, and it's very appreciated. This has been a particularly busy year for negotiations. Yes, it has. has. It feels that way to me anyway. Yeah, but, um, all right. 9.5 is to receive the 2015-16 annual report. I think Simple receive item only. We're required to deliver it to you. It will ultimately become part of the town report for the year 15-16. Uh, we're proud of the accomplishments. It was a successful school year. Uh, 9.6 is to act on the ed specs educational specifications for the roof replacement at the Melissa Jones Elementary School, uh, including the filing of the SCG 049 and submission of the project to the Board of Selectmen. We did talk about this a little bit in the Operations Committee. There is a... a uh, yeah, I did misspeak in Operations. There is a copy in your packet. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so the, the plan is to do some roof replacement on Melissa Jones. Uh, before it starts to leak, right? Mm -hmm. That would be the goal. Um, so, uh, in the form that we're filing, is a state form for reimbursement for a portion of the cost. Right, correct. And at least currently, it's still 30 percent reimbursement. We, we expect that that's what's going to happen here. That's what we anticipate. Okay. And this has been this has been reviewed by Standing Building, and it's been approved. Okay. All right. Then, is there a motion that we approve the educational specifications for Melissa Jones Elementary School I'll roof replacement? Second. Second. Okay. Any other questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay. Uh, Nine point seven, Mr. Gurnam asked that we just table that because this, the one that we just looked at, is more important in the short term, and he wanted to do some more work on the. Uh, on the, uh, uh, the other, yeah, the local review. So that's fine. Uh, Ten point one, a policy committee report. Anything going on? No, we um, we have not met in several months. Um, we have a meeting scheduled. Our regularly scheduled meeting is going to be at the end of June. Although uh, Mr. Bowden and I have talked about um, the policy committee scheduling a special meeting sometime in between then, um, simply sin since we can kind of review some items and because we haven't met in, in several months. Um, so we will have more to report at that time. Well, and you'll probably have some things to, to do after the General uh, Assembly can re can, uh, recesses, right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Operations Committee? I think we've covered it. Okay. Uh, curriculum Instruction and Assessment Committee did meet very briefly before this meeting and elected Dr. Moore to be its chair moving forward. So Dr. Moore will be the chair of this committee uh, as of, well, right now, but then uh, in developing the agendas moving forward. And that, then that committee meets, I think, in two weeks? Okay. Um, okay. And then anything, uh, let's see, Town Committee liaisons, anything else? 
Anything nothing, going on? Nothing to report from the Land Acquisition Committee okay. relevant to us. Okay. Uh, anything with LEARN going on? Uh, there is a meeting on Thursday. I, I will say I've had some um, other meetings. I, I have a faculty meeting on Thursday, and there's another meeting that's come in on Thursday, and it's making it tough for me to get to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's anybody else on the board or coming in that wants the experience, I mean, it, it is interesting to get to know some of the other boards that are um, on there. It's, it is not as relevant to us because we're on the edge of the district. It, a lot of the work around LEARN and focuses on the magnet schools, which we don't have a lot of interaction with. Um, but I think it, it, it is valuable. It's just um, once we, maybe in November, we may have to revisit if there's somebody else. So when do they, when are those meetings? Thursday, like first Thursday, second, or um, second Thursday? Yeah, it's the, whatever this one is. Must be the second, second Thursday. Thursday. I think second the second Thursday, Thursday yeah, um, <laughs> of each month. They don't meet in the summer. They are daytime? They're daytime so. meetings? Like I, when? What time do they meet? Uh, yeah, it's like 9 to 10, 30 or something. Okay. And it's up in one of the limes, right? It's in old lime. Yeah. Um, and I do sit on the executive committee at LEARN. And so um, even if board members can't make the meetings regularly, we, we do have regular contact with LEARN. Okay. Uh, all right. Item 11 on the agenda is public questions. Uh, so, I, you know, the scouts have been here all meeting. Uh, do they want to ask any questions? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Don't be shy. No. <laughs> That's true. This is your chance, though. You know, you could you could take the opportunity. But if you don't, that's okay too. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Um, then I is that it? Yeah. Did we miss anything? No. Move to adjourn. <laughs> right? It's worth noting that it's an eight thirty adjournment with all of us here. Yes. <laughs> 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 uh, it's the superintendent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what, are you, what are you asking us? Uh, just an observation. What are you, what are you asking it's us? Interesting to note. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. That, but not as interesting as adjourning. So, no. uh, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs>